So this topic is one that I've talked at great length about in the past, but it keeps coming up and, and it's one that's very difficult to really explain to people. So that's why a lot of people keep asking questions about Emacs and Vim. Uh, Vim versus Emacs. What's the difference? If I'm a, a Vim user, why should I even want to use Emacs? What's the reason? And uh, part of the confusion is a lot of people compare Vim and Emacs. And to be honest, Vim and Emacs are not even remotely comparable because they are so vastly different. They're just fundamentally totally different things. And I think this is part of the reason why no one's ever really been able to answer this question properly because, you know, when somebody asks, hey, why should I, the Vim user, switch to Emacs? When, you know, no one, no one's going to have a good answer for that because that question, for one thing, is almost nonsensical. That is like me asking, hey, I'm a Notepad++ user, should I switch to Steam? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like uh, Notepad++ is an editor. Steam obviously is a gaming platform. It's like the question doesn't even make sense. And it's almost that kind of way with Vim and Emacs. They are so not the same thing, you know, really, truly apples to oranges, right? So when you ask, hey, should I switch from Vim to Emacs? It's almost like you're asking something ridiculous, like should I switch from Firefox as my browser to Thunderbird as my email client? It's like, wait, what? And, you know, <laughs> I, I don't under, I can't even understand the question. So how could I possibly give you an answer? Now, having said all that, I am actually going to try to answer the question today. At least I'm going to give it my very best shot. So let's talk about, you know, why people criticize Emacs as far as like the Vim users that don't want to switch to Emacs. You know, what are they typically complaining about? Well, I think the biggest criticism about Emacs seems to be that Emacs is a text editor, which it's really not. You know, that, that's why the question, hey, should I switch from Vim to Emacs, why, why that question is nonsensical is because Vim is a text editor. Emacs really isn't a text editor. And that's where really the confusion comes from, especially if you're a Vim user that has tried to use Emacs. You know, so many of you guys that are Vim users, you know, you switch to Emacs thinking it's a text editor, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to just have Emacs be your text editor and it doesn't make sense to you. And the reason it doesn't make sense is because Emacs is not really a text editor. At least it's not solely a text editor. Emacs really is more akin to a complete operating system. It's really more akin to being a window manager. It's really, you could almost think of it as being a terminal emulator more than a text editor. Like the text editing, yeah, there's a text editor component to Emacs. Emacs has a text editor, but Emacs is definitely not a text editor. And when we're talking about Emacs being a replacement for something, Emacs really isn't a replacement for your text editor. Like Emacs is not meant, I, I wouldn't say Emacs is your replacement for Vim. Emacs is really a replacement for your terminal emulator and the terminal emulator workflow that so many of you guys are used to. Emacs it basically replaces all of that. Let me switch over to my desktop and let's discuss, you know, your traditional terminal workflow. So you open a terminal typically, right? You open a terminal and here at the command line, you run some commands. Maybe you do an LS, you CD around to, I don't know, different things. Oh, uh, we'll just CD here. I'll do an LS, check what is in here. And then, you know, you'll open something in Vim, right? And then you'll play around, you'll do your edits, you know, whatever edits you want to make, right? And then you'll write and quit. And then you're back at the command line to once again, you know, CD around and do all of your uh, GNU core util commands. Maybe you'll manipulate some streams of text using things like grip, set, all, you know, all of that stuff. And then maybe you'll find another file that you'll want to edit and you'll, you, and you'll end up back in your text editor because a lot of times you'll end up in text editors in this kind of workflow. And then you quit, you're back at the command line. And then finally, when you think you're done with everything, you'll close out of the terminal. So that's your traditional terminal based workflow. And when I say Emacs is more of a replacement for a terminal 
than a replacement for Vim or whatever text editor you're using is because, you know, the Emacs workflow is very similar to a terminal workflow as in, you know, how you get things done. So in Emacs, what you do is you just open Emacs. You don't open a terminal, right? You just open Emacs and you can run some commands. You could do a meta X to get a list of all the thousands of various Emacs commands to run. Or if you got key bindings for certain things, you can, you know, do a key binding to open whatever program or here, whatever, you know, text file I want to open, you know, and I can play around in this file and do whatever changes I want to do. And then when I'm done, you know, I can uh, save the file. I can quit out of the file. I can go somewhere else inside of Emacs. But, you know, in Emacs, unlike the terminal workflow where when you quit out of Vim, you just drop back to uh, the command line. You, you, I can go anywhere I want to in Emacs. So if I want to, I can go back to the dashboard page. But if I, you know, want to go somewhere else you know i could just go to my list of buffers that's another thing that's a little bit different with emacs and vim is buffers right so both emacs and vim have buffers a buffer is just you know a program that's running that's open that you can come back to the difference is vim of course being a text editor you know those buffers are just text editing buffers where everything you do in emacs is a buffer so if i go to the web browser in emacs so if i do eww and let's go to distro.tube my website you know i can go here and this buffer you know it'll be in the buffer list as long as i don't kill this buffer this buffer will always be around i can go back to my emacs config if i wanted to i could you know go to my qtile config and you'll notice you know the text here is different it's not zoomed in right this is a normal size text because i didn't zoom in in this buffer right i zoomed in in this buffer that's another thing with emacs because you have these different buffers and they all have their own you know memory as far as what you were doing in them and as long as you never kill the buffer you could end up with dozens or in some cases even hundreds of these buffers in emacs that you can switch between and it's you know, it's, it's a radically different kind of workflow than your terminal based workflow, your terminal based command line Vim based workflow, because you don't have that. You don't have, have those kinds of buffers. Yes, Vim has buffers, but Vim has buffers within Vim itself. Right. And Vim is just a text editor where Emacs is really that whole terminal experience. All of your command line programs, all of your in curses programs, your terminal user interface programs, your text editor, everything you do. Imagine if your terminal and everything you did in it had buffers. All, all the programs were part of this one unified interface. And because they were all one unified interface, they all use the same key bindings. And like, how magical would that be if every single thing you did in the terminal they all shared the same key binding. So that's essentially what Emacs is. It's giving you that terminal kind of workflow but instead of opening a terminal, you open Emacs. The difference is everything you do inside of Emacs is, again, it's unified under that one interface, that one set of key bindings. Everything is configured in one config file, right? It's, everything, all of your, imagine if your terminal emulator and every single one, every single one of your command line programs, in curses programs, terminal user interface programs, they were all written in the exact same language configured in the exact same config file. That's what Emacs is. So that's why the question about switching from Vim to Emacs is it, no one ever can really answer that because again, it's a, such a nonsensical question because again, Emacs is not really replacing Vim. Emacs is replacing your terminal. Think of your terminal emulator here and everything you, you do at the command line, then you end up in a text editor such as Vim. You, imagine you, know, you spend a lot of time at the terminal. If you're one of those people that you do so much work in the terminal, you're no longer going to do that if you switch to Emacs. If you're using Emacs the way it's supposed to be used, Emacs is essentially replacing your terminal. So in, instead of opening a terminal to begin whatever work you're about to do, you open Emacs. Do everything in Emacs, right? You've got your text editor inside of Emacs. If you need to run things at a shell prompt, you've got various shells when, within Emacs, such as the E shell, which the E shell is, you know, quite magical. Let me open up E shell here in another window. Let me move it so you, my head's not in the way. But the E shell is awesome because it's got a lot of your standard uh, command line, like GNU core util kind of applications that you can run. But of course, 
being that it's written in Emacs Lisp, I could run a Emacs Lisp program, such as the find file command, your standard Emacs find file command program. I could find file my dot bash RC. When I do that, it's going to open the dot bash RC in an Emacs editing buffer, right? And when I'm done, I could, you know, go back to my previous buffer. I'll still be in the E shell. So again, Emacs, it's really all about replacing your terminal workflow. The question about Vim and Emacs, they're not comparable. One's a text editor. One is a much more complete environment, a complete user interface where, you know, again, it would be like me asking, hey, should I switch from my text editor G edit to Qtal, the window manager, right? That actually is a very good analogy, right? Because asking, should I switch from gedit to Qtal is essentially like asking, should I switch from Vim to Emacs? Because Vim, again, is a text editor where Emacs is much closer to being something like a window manager than a text editor. I think what really kind of muddies the water a little bit when we uh, ask these questions about Vim and Emacs and trying to compare the two, trying to decide which one is right for you, is too many people focus on things like features and functionality, especially, you know, it missing features and mis missing functionality. Hey, if I switch from Vim to Emacs, what am I going to be missing? You know, what do I need to do? What do I need to tweak? And it's not about that at all as far as, you know, functionality and features, Vim and Emacs, as far as their text editing capabilities, it's pretty much on par with each other. So it's nothing about that. And, you know, that's, that's not what we're talking about when we talk about Vim versus Emacs. So it's all about the differences in workflow. That's the difference, right? And I, that's part of the reason why so many people criticize Emacs or resist Emacs. They don't really want to touch it. It's because they know it's going to be a, a different kind of workflow. And, you know, people resist change. People fear change. People resist change. And I, I get it because I'm the same way in many aspects of my computing life. You know, I don't like breaking existing workflow. And you certainly have to break your workflow if you switch from that terminal based workflow to Emacs, because now all of your terminal based programs you know, that you used to run, all of those terminal based uh, editors and file managers, various incurses programs and things like that that you used to run, you know, you're going to learn all new programs because no longer are you going to use those terminal based programs. You're going to use Emacs based programs that will replace all of that stuff. But here's the thing, even though you're going to have to learn some new things and yes, it's going to take a little work once you get there again, that uniform experience that you'll have under Emacs for having all things be Emacs because they all share the same interface, the same config file, all written in the same programming language, which if you learn that one programming language, Emacs Lisp, you can edit all of your programs. It's it's magical. I mean, in a lot of ways, Emacs is magic. It's, it's the beauty of Emacs. So hopefully I did a better job answering that question than maybe I've answered it in the past. Maybe other people have answered it. I don't, again, it's such a, again, it's a weird question because Vim and Emacs are so totally different. It's just, it's a strange question. And obviously that's why you get so many strange answers. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Matt, Paul, Steve West, Arcotic, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tianren, Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this little rant about Vim versus Emacs as far as workflow, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about free and open source software, including Emacs, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.